guys, it's your boy, Barca boy 103. Today we're gonna be reacting to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours. Firstly, Marcus Alonso signing. It's pretty much done. 100% the signing will be happening this week. The question now is when. He will be a Blaugrana, he will be the sixth signing of the summer. It is the deals on the verge of completion for, of course, under 10 million euros and we do have the first report on what the exact fee will be for Alonso that will review you guys that fee of course but Alonso signing will be confirmed pretty much very very soon he will become a new Barcelona player alongside hopefully in the future Lionel Messi a lot of reports coming out about Messi. There are mixed reports. Some people are saying that Barcelona have already begun negotiating with Messi's side to see if he wants to come back to Barcelona, contracts, all that sort of stuff, and how he wants to return and how he wants to make that big impact. Some people are saying, oh, it's still too early. It's wait till after the World Cup. But the most important thing is that Joan Laporta in the media keeps coming out and saying that we do owe a moral debt to Messi. And there is no doubt that Barcelona are playing the return of Leo Messi, and they do want to make that feasible now currently for the current squad of barcelona to bring in the new signings to have registration to have be not an issue this summer players will have to leave the club this summer now braithwaite of titi will be leaving the club in the next few days of course braithwaite got booed to absolutely crazy and whistled at the john gamber presentation of course something did not go there to avoid that the board and pretty much on the porta has confirmed that both these two players will be leaving very very soon and we do have big, big updates on the future of Frankie de Jong. Of course, Chelsea Man United both want him. They both will pay the transfer fee for him and also his deferred salary. But there are big rumors that Barcelona could be taking legal action against Frankie de Jong for his currently illegal contract. Big updates about that. And finally, a midfielder at Barcelona who will 100% stay this summer is, of course, Gavi. And we do have some uh, updates on his contract renewal that is absolutely imminent announcement but before we get into it make sure you guys smash that like button down below let's try to get the 300 likes this video be very much appreciated and also if you're new make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already and let's get into it let's start off with the transfer news over the past 24 hours so the first player that we have been linked with is of course the number one target and priority signing for barcelona currently in the summer transfer window is of course marcus alonso now mundo portivo come out saying that barcelona will close Marcel Alonso signing for around 8 million euros. He will sign a two-year contract with another year option and his medical test could be taking place either today or tomorrow. Alonso will 100% be Barcelona's sixth signing of the summer so a couple things firstly 8 million years I think this is a, you know a package so it could be six initial fee plus some variables in there not too fussed about it. Again, it's under 10 million euros, which was what my main, you know, objective. 8 million, good for me, package, it is what it is. Secondly, of course, La Liga starts this Saturday and Barcelona need to register their players by, I believe, Friday or Saturday morning at the latest. So the club we're doing right now is getting the registration fully sorted out. Once that is done, they will sign Marcus Alonso. When they register the new players, they want to leave some room as well for Marcus Alonso for his signing. That's why the deal could be delayed quite a bit, but 100% the deal is getting done this week. 100%. I can even say a thousand percent. I think Romano even came out saying that this week deal will be done. The question now is when? Today, tomorrow, Friday, Saturday. Marcos Alonso will be a Barcelona player next this week at some point. Get ready for the here we go. Get ready for my video confirming the operation as well. Again, we're still waiting for you know more confirmation on the fee. Right now we're hearing the only fee that we've heard right now, besides from less than 10 million euros, is an 8 million euro package. So again, we'll wait and see. But 100%, Marcos Alonso will become a new Barcelona player at some point this week. Now the next player that we have been linked with is a player that will join Barcelona next summer if the operation happens as a free agent is of course the return of Leo Messi. Now over the past 24 hours, there has been a lot of speculation about his return. Firstly, Xavi Campos from Cat Radio has come out saying that Barcelona are negotiating with Leo Messi's entourage for his return in 2023. There are good chances for it to happen. Laporta is in conversation with Messi's entourage. They're talking about his possible return. Messi would end his contract at PSG and finish his career at Barcelona. And the MLS option now for Messi is cooling down and it will be a one or two year contract next summer if he does arrive now messi's plan i believe since 
I would say, before the pandemic was to either retire Barcelona or leave, go to MLS for one, two years, then go back to News Old Boy and retire there. But now it's apparently changing. Messi wants to come back to Barcelona and then retire at Barcelona. So this is only coming in from Chavi Campos. There are other uh, outlets saying that, oh, Barcelona, not Barcelona, John Laporte doesn't talk with Messi's entourage as for a possible return. Some people are saying it's too early. There's no talks. I think the PSG sources are saying there's no talks whatsoever with Messi, but Laporte or even PSG to accept his contract. He's going to wait till after the World Cup. I'm on that same boat as well. And until, until after the World Cup, I'm not taking any uh, news into heart so to speak but again the news is still coming in Gerard Romero has come out saying that my feeling is that Messi will return to Barcelona this is the number one source in Barcelona saying that he feels at the moment that Messi will most likely return of course this is his feeling but keep in mind his feeling is better than me and you's feeling he knows a lot of other stuff you know I guarantee you he has Mateo Anima's number and is texting him left right and center but he's saying that he feels that Messi will return I mean what the rumors are is that Barcelona, of course, are spending a lot of money this summer. Next summer, we only have like 80 million euros to spend. Apparently, Barcelona want to get Trent and then Messi on a free deal, and that's it. I mean, those are the rumors, but there is, I would say, a feeling from my perspective is that next summer, we won't be spending that much money. We won't be having a big overhaul that we had this summer, so... I mean, it is possible, but Joan Laporta has spoken about Leo Messi over the past 24 hours during an interview he did before the Joan Gamper match yesterday. He came out saying he was asked about Messi's possible return, said that Leo Messi is a PSG player, and I'll keep it like that. We owe a moral debt to him. Our relationship with Messi's family is still good. Now, the R report is coming out from the PSG press and the O oh, Laporte and Messi still not on good terms and not terrible terms, but like still not talking. And Laporta keeps saying we owe a moral debt to him. Rumors are is that O oh, Laporta feels so so bad for letting Messi go last summer. He wants to repay him. Because of course last summer he promised that he would stay. He wants to pay him back, saying, Look, I'm so sorry. I just I couldn't I tried my best I know I told you last second that's bad on my part I apologize but it was the last board that pretty much screwed it up but I want to bring it back I want to repay the terrible thing that I did to you last summer and of course I think today marks one year since that press conference where he cried what am I, what a year I mean the turnaround is fantastic but during that moment probably I was at an all time low but now they're talking about his return we, I said this last summer as well when I was making my goodbye vis message that look next summer get ready for the rumors they're gonna be all over the place but again I would hold on to the fact that Laporta keeps saying we owe a moral debt to him every time he, they bring up Messi to him that's what he says so we'll wait and see again until after the World Cup I'm not thinking about it if he wins it loses it it doesn't really matter and I also take a look at PSG win the Champions League as well if they do win I think maybe he'll say you know what let me say a year to try to defend it I don't know I think that could be a possibility but again mixed reports coming out about Messi's future some people saying that Barcelona are negotiating with his family and talking with the player on his side some people saying it's too early at the moment let's now discuss the players who have been rumored to leave Barcelona over the past 24 hours first up I want to discuss the imminent departure of Samuel Umtiti and also Martin Braithwaite. Now, yesterday, Juan Kemper match, we of course have the squad presentation as well. Umtiti and Braithwaite were both in the squad list. A few hours before, it was rumored that both players will not play. And then this came out for Fernando Porto from Deportivo. He came out saying that Umtiti, of course, will not be appearing in the Juan Gamper trophy match yesterday. The player and his agent came to a mutual agreement with the club regarding not playing today as he's still looking for a way out. Pretty much, he did not want to get booed again. Of course, last summer in the Juan Gamper match, he came out, he got booed. This time, he wanted to avoid that saying, look to the club, I'm 100% going to leave. I don't want to go for this match. Let me go and work on my departure. The club said, you know what? Fair enough. But one player did come out and that was Martin Braithwaite. And he got whistled and boo to no extent I've ever seen before. I remember Umtiti's, well, Umtiti's at the Juan, uh, was at the Johan Cruyff Stadium and it was still, you know, COVID. So he probably got away with it a little bit. But Umtiti's weight, 
got absolutely destroyed. And then after the match, Relivo came out saying that both Braithwaite and Umtiti will leave Barcelona in the next few days. And also Joan Laporta during that, you know, pre-interview for the Joan Gepper match, he was asked about the exclusion of Martin Braithwaite and Umtiti from today's squad. And he said that both these players understand they have to leave the club. As clear as day, Omtiti most likely will be alone in the next summer we're terminating his contract with that agreement that we came up with back in January. Um, and with Braithwaite, most likely a contract termination with him as well. It should be happening over the next few days. Again, keep in mind, this Saturday, La Liga registration, we need to get rid of both these two players' wages to bring in the new wages. I think by at least the bare minimum this Saturday, both players will be leaving. The question now is when and also how. Now another player who will also be leaving the club in the next few days but in a positive way he will be going out all alone to develop his game is of course Alex Collado. Now Mundo Deportivo came out saying that Alex Collado is already looking for a loan move away from Barcelona in order to continue his development. Of course in the Juan Camper match yesterday he did not play as well. He was given the number six for the squad presentation. I think that's just, you know, a formality, but he was, you know, there, of course, still on good terms with the club, and he will be leaving the club in the next few days on loan. Now, right now, we're not hearing reports about any club he could go to. He could be going to the Bundesliga, La Liga. I don't know where he's going to go. I think he'll stay in Spain. I don't think he'll go too far, of course. He did accept the club Bruges offer back last summer. That deal fell through with the club's not reaching an agreement, so you never know with Collado but again no doubt I know for a fact there are offs on the table and that's all for Collado and his team and of course the club as well to decide what the best option is for him again he will not be that fifth option for the Barcelona attack you know be backups for Dembele, Rafinha, Ferran, and so maybe even as an interior as well that was the original plan but a few days ago Collado asked Xavi to go out on loan and Xavi gave the green light so wait and see you in the next couple of days again La Liga starts on Saturday registration so I think he will leave before then if he does go to the Liga club, of course, but Callado will be leaving the club this summer on loan as he searches for some more game time to develop his game. But the player this summer that will generate the most revenue in his sale if he is sold this summer is, of course, Frankie de Jong. Now, from May the 20th until yesterday, there's been really no change with Frankie de Jong's future. United want him, agreement that has been reached on the fee. Chelsea came in and started sifting around a bit. But over the past 24 hours since the Drone Gamper match, but before the Drone Gamper and after the Drone Gamper, there have been a lot of developments on Frankie Dion's future. That's why I went with the caption on the bottom there. His situation right now is all over the place. I'm going to go in order. Firstly, before the Drone Gamper match, Relivo, of course, Juan Marti, Alberto Rogue, Matea Marito came out with a big statement saying that last season, when Dion's salary was reduced, it was not mentioned as a constructional condition that he would receive the remaining 19 million euros in a single payment in case he left the club. His representatives is not against a transfer, but he does not want to leave Barcelona without resolving this issue. A possible solution might occur if Frankie Young himself gives the green light for a transfer. Transfer. Even as of today, Frankie de Jong stands firm about staying his decision on staying at Barcelona, but from the club they emphasize that everything regarding his future is still open. Now Relievo also came out saying that last season, Frankie de Jong was earning 4 million euros gross per season. Now gross is before tax, of course tax in Spain, 50%. So on paper, last season, Frankie de Jong, according to Relivo, was earning 2 million euros net in his pocket. If you do the math, divide that by 52, 52 weeks in a year, that's 40,000 euros per week, I believe. That is absurd. If that is true, I'm 100% agree, well not agree, 100% understand with what Frankie de Jong was doing. With his deferred salary, he got paid 50,000 per week last season, which is beyond ridiculousness in my opinion. So this came out before the Joan Gamper match, of course, during the Joan Gamper ceremony, both Joan Laporta and uh, Xavi Hernandez as well commented on the future of Frankie de Jong. Firstly, Joan Laporta. Frankie de Jong is a player of great quality and we want him to stay and as he does as well. He has offers, but he wants to continue. With him, we have a stronger midfield. Again, still saying that Frankie de Jong, he wants him to stay and blah, blah, blah. He wants to stay as well. But then Chavi came out after the match in his press conference. He came out saying that I don't know what will happen with Frankie de Jong until August 31st. Anything can happen, but he knows that what I think and what the club wants him to do. Of course, I'm counting on him because he is a great player. Now, when I first read this, I'm thinking, 
That's exactly what Pep Guardiola said about Bernardo Silva a few days ago as well. So again, this is pretty much Xavi saying that, look, Frankie now knows the situation of the club. The club knows what he wants from him. Everyone knows what everyone wants from each other. The question now is, what's it going to happen? Laporta is still sticking with the same stuff. Frankie Young's a fantastic player. We want him to stay, and he wants to stay as well, which is very clear. Now, of course, after the match, this happened, uh, the quote from Laporta before the match, Xavi, of course, after the match. Now, also after the match, his fiance Mickey, was walking home or in the car or whatever it was, and fans were asking him, or asking her, should I say, sorry, if the player is going to stay at Barcelona and she responded by saying we hope so but we don't know yet again same thing same you know nothing really changing there pretty much I think Frankie de Jong is in there you saw him you know in the presentation with his angry face like this and then in the match he pulls an absolute masterclass of a performance getting a goal and playing absolutely fantastically and then you have the whole stadium chanting Frankie 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 you're thinking maybe something can change here and then we got a big bombshell this morning, of course, from David Ornstein, number one journalist in the world, probably in my opinion, in terms of, you know, everything. He came out with a big exclusive. He said that Barcelona have told Frankie de Jong they want to annul his extending contract and return to the deal that he was on before, aligning in terms given by Bartomeu's board involving criminality and providing ground for legal action against those involved. Barcelona informed this to Frankie de Jong on July the 15th and of course on July the 14th Barcelona reached an agreement with Manchester United for a transfer in total for a package that had been found guilty of evidence and criminal activities against the parties who signed the contract renewal back in October 2020. So David Ornstein is saying this July 14th Barcelona and United reached a full agreement 75 million euros plus 10 million euros in variables for Frankie de Jong. Next day Barcelona had a meeting with Frankie de Jong and his agent and told him look your contract right now is illegal. What Bartomeu gave you in that contract renewal before we came in in October, you know, it was the Longlet, Ter Stegen, PK, Frankie de Jong. Those four renewed their contracts. All four of them are illegal. David Orsi even said that look, the club even talked to Longlet, Ter Stegen, and PK about those contracts. Those contracts are illegal. They were done on purpose by Bartomeu to screw up the current board by jacking up all their wages by. 100 or 200 percent and they told him look if you go back to the old terms that you signed back in 2019 it's still under Bartomeu but that contract is way more legal so to speak if you go back to that contract we're gonna be on good terms if you don't the club will take legal action which I think is just purely like just so so ridiculous David Orsley also came out saying that Chelsea are ready to pay a full transfer fee and also cover Frankie Dion's current deferred salary with Barcelona. Again, we're both hearing now what we're hearing from everyone now that Manchester United and Chelsea will pay the transfer fee, plus on top of that, the 19 million euros deferred salary that Frankie de Jong is owned by Barcelona. So again, like I said in the bottom, there's the caption, the young situation all over the place. It really is, but this has been the big bombshell that Barcelona have told Frankie de Jong, look, your current contract is illegal. We will take legal action against you and Bartomeu if you not return to your old contract, back to those old terms from this contract that you signed in 2019, I believe. I, can, I mean, I feel so bad for Frankie de Jong, man, but this is the situation that he's in. It sucks, but this is the reality. His contract right now is absolutely ridiculous. Ain't no way in hell we're paying him half a million euros per week. The first salary or not, it's just ridiculous. And again, I say this one more time. The article David Orsi that he released as an exclusive, he also says that Clement Longley, Ter Stegen, and Pique's contract are being discussed with Barcelona as well. They told them the exact same thing. It's not just Frankie de Jong, because their current contracts are, you know, filled with criminal uh, investigations, criminal actions. Because again, Bartomeu did the contract renewal on purpose to screw up the current board by jacking up their wages by 100-200%. So... A wait and see with Frankie. Again, we're still hearing from Gerard De Miro saying that situation right now with Frankie De Jong is very, very hot. I cannot comment on it because I'll get in trouble by Barcelona. So Gerard De Miro knows something. He doesn't want to say it. And he's saying that, look, by this week, we should have, by the end of this week, should I say, we should have, you know, a con not a concrete, but have an idea on which direction Frankie De Jong will be going with, either staying at Barcelona or leaving the club. Again, I will say it again. I need Frankie or Bernardo in my fit midfield. I don't really care who it is at the moment, but one of them has to be there. And again, the big question still is, who's it going to be? From one Dutchman to another, another Dutch player that Barcelona want to sell this summer is, of course, Memphis Depay. Yesterday, the Joan Gamper match, he walked out with the number 25 kit, which, of course, 
Big slap in the face for him and he looked very, very disappointed throughout the whole entire presentation, also during the match as well. Now this morning, Gazzardo de la Sport in Italy have come out saying that Juventus want to sign Alvaro Morata, but Atletico Madrid want to keep him. He is their priority. After seeing the signing of Philippe Kostic from Frankfurt over the next 24 to 40 hours, the Italian club will return their attention to Memphis Depay. So again, also by the end of this week, I would say expect Juventus to make a move for Memphis. Now Sport, of course, reliability a bit iffy but they've been talking about Juventus and Memphis for the pie for like I think a few weeks now and they came out they keep coming out saying that oh they'll pay Juventus 20 million euros they'll sign uh, Memphis on a two-year contract or uh, Memphis extends his contract for one year goes out alone with the mandatory buy option of 20 million euros so we're still hearing that Juventus want to pay Barcelona for Memphis Depay, but again, we're hearing from Fabrizio Romano from the exclusive that Memphis Depay wants to leave as a free agent. They want to terminate his contract. They don't want to get a fee for himself. I mean, I think the reality is that Memphis will leave. We saw him, you know, yesterday in the John Gamper. He came on for like the last 10 minutes, 15 minutes. That's the reality of his game time. He only, only came on because Ferran Torres was injured. If Ferran Torres was not injured, he wouldn't have come on at all. So... It's sad. I think, you know, he got big cheers from his uh, when he came out for his presentation as well. So the fans still appreciate. I still appreciate. I think we all can appreciate what Memphis done over the past year. Came in when we were at an all-time low. Sold some, you know, jerseys with his number nine. Came in and put in solid performances when he wasn't, you know, injured. But he was injured from, I think, what, November until February? Something like that. Like, he was on and off a lot. So we'll wait and see on Memphis. Again, I think he has to leave. I think that's the reality. But the question now is when he'll leave and also very, very importantly as well, how will he leave by transfer fee to Barcelona or a contract termination and then he does leave as a free agent or maybe even alone with a contract renewal with a buy obligation for Juventus. Now, one of the big topics around Barcelona's squad over the past few days has been the future of both Nico and Merlin Pjanic. Xavi had to make a decision on who will be the backup to Busquets, Nico or Pjanic. And we are hearing over the past 24 hours that Xavi wants to keep both. Now, Mourinho Portivo came out saying that coaching staff sees Deacon Gonzalez and Mirlan Pjanic compatible in the squad together, although their futures depend on many factors. Everything is still open. Pjanic is open to reducing his salary and staying with the club in a backup role as well. AS Javi Miguel came out saying that Xavi begins to assume that a loan for Nico is probably the best option for him, especially with Pjanic continuing at the club. Now, of course, yesterday, Juan Gamper, Xavi came out speaking after the match. Pjanic did not play in the Gamper yesterday, and Nico came on for Busquets, played 45 minutes, and he came out saying after the match that Nico and Pjanic can both help us a lot. Even though he didn't play yesterday, Pjanic, I think Pjanic can help us a lot because of the way that he plays in our system. So that's Xavi saying, look, I'm happy with both, and also, I kind of want to keep both as well. For me, this pretty much confirms that Pjanic is staying. As long as he takes a salary reduction and accepts that squad role, he will stay. But again, there's still question marks around Nico, because of course, if you have Pjanic, that's good competition. Will he pick Pjanic over Nico? We saw yesterday in the John Gamper, he picked Nico. He played 45 minutes, but then will Pjanic sit on the bench really for the whole season, play maybe a couple of Ray match and come in if there's injuries, worst case scenario? That's still very much in the year. Now, Mundo Portivo came out saying there are some big chances for Nico to leave on loan, even though Chavi told him a few days ago that he counts on him. In addition to that, Alejandro Baldi leaving alone is not ruled out 100% yet either, even more so now after Marcos Alonso signing is going to be completed in the next few days. I think Baldi thousand percent to go on loan and we sign Marcos Alonso. There's no point in keeping him. I wanted to go out there and play some regular minutes. I think the Bundesliga could be a great option for him. Maybe League uh, maybe another team in La Liga as well. I think alone for Balde and the club should be looking at that right now. I think he should be going out alone. With Nico though, there is a big question we are hearing now from the Valencia press saying that all oh, Valencia have reactivated their interest in Nico. They want to sign him on loan. They think Barcelona will let him go with the continuation now of Milan Pjanic. I think Nico played very well yesterday in the Joan Gamper match. I think he is not the perfect, but I think he's the best option that we currently have on the market and in the squad right now to replace Busquets long term. But again, I'll say it again. If Busquets is going to play for, you know, 85 to 100% of the matches this season, will Chavi just, you know, rinse him for his final year? Then sure, pick PN should be that backup and then send Nico out alone. But if you want to, you know, phase out Busquets a little bit, he'll play maybe, you know, 60, 70, or 80% of the matches. And then you have that other, you know, 30, 20, or 40% left. I would play Nico for that. And again, training with Busquets week in, week out for a whole entire season will be a big plus for him. But we'll wait and see. I would say Balde right now, 99% will go out alone with Marcus Alonso coming in. But with Nico, I would say 50-50. I think it depends on what Chavi decides. Will Miranda Pena just literally just stay and be, you know, a training 
training player, he'll come in and train with the team at that additional body and then maybe here and there again, he'll play in the actual game. We'll wait and see, but what we do know for sure right now is that 100% most likely, pending fatality reduction up in IP Yanich, he will stay at the club. Baldi very likely for a loan, and Nico still 50-50. Let's now discuss some contract renewal updates around the first team at Barcelona. Firstly, the only update that we do have on the contract renewal of Pablo Gabe. Now this report came of course from Gerard Romero, number one source around Barcelona, but it did come before the Juan Yapper match. He came out saying that Gabe's contract renewal will be done at some point this week. Gabe's renewal will have to wait a little bit though in order to close the registration of the new signings, but everything is agreed between both parties, Barcelona and Gabe's side, but the renewal would affect the wage bill and that's why Barcelona prefer to close the new arrivals first and then focus on his renewal. Now during the Juan Yapper presentation, he did come out as the number six of course on paper out with the naked eye Collado had number six so it came out it was um it was Ter Stegen, Dest, Arujo, Collado, Gavi and then Dembele so they're basically saying look Collado right now on paper number six and then Gavi came out in that number six position but with the number 30 number on his shirt as well look he's gonna get six and he will renew his contract 100% I'm not worried about it whatsoever, but the club right now are firstly focused on registering Dembele, Roberto on the new contracts, Lewandowski, Conde, and Rafinha as well. Once those five are registered, they'll then, you know, uh, move on to Marcus Alonso, making room for him, Gabby's renewal as well. So, wait and see, but no way whatsoever, he will renew again, like Gerard Mero said, everything agree between Barcelona and Gabby on his contract renewal. The question now really is, when will it be official? Now, the final topic that I want to discuss before I end off this video is give you guys some updates surrounding Barcelona over the past 24 hours hours mainly around of course the registration of the new players now before the Juan Gamper match Juan Laporta was speaking to the media via Juan Marti from Relivo and he came out saying that all signings can and will be registered and football does not wait there is no transitional season that's why he spent a lot of money this summer as long as I have the honor of being the president of Barcelona the club will always be belonging to the members so again more confirmation about the players being registered there are reports coming out in the UK saying that all oh, Barcelona cannot register players. They want to sell Frankie de Jong, Memphis, maybe even Ter Stegen in order to sell the register of the new players. Absolute crap. When Gerard the Miro speaks, you listen. He came out like a few days ago saying that all the players will be registered. No worries about that. And even Joel Laporta came out during his Drawn Gamper interview confirming the exact same thing. He came out saying that we continue to work to build a competitive team and our work is not done yet. Some players will leave and another deal has possibly taken place as well, i.e. Marcos Alonso and maybe possibly Bernardo Silva. He's asked about the fourth lever as well, so the fourth lever is a valid option that is under our consideration if needed. So... All the players right now can be registered and we also have the fourth lever which is the other 24.5% of Barcelona studio for 100 million euros ready to be sold as well. The board are doing a fantastic job, they have backup plans to the backup plans to the backup plans. I have no worries whatsoever that all the players will be registered but of course it's not 100% done yet but the sources and the rumors are is that there will be no worries with Barcelona for registration for the upcoming La Liga season. Of course the deadline I believe is Friday or Saturday morning, something like that. I remember last season. PK reduced the salary like what a few hours before the match that way Aguero, um, Memphis and Eric Garcia all got registered so I think the deadline is pretty much a couple hours before the match but I think I well, could be wrong we'll wait and see but again there's absolute maximum confidence that all players will be registered for the start of the La Liga season this Saturday. So that was my reaction to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours so if you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure to leave a like and of course leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed the main thing I want to firstly of course is on the possible return of Leo Messi do you think it will happen or not? Secondly, on Samuel Umtiti and Martin Braithwaite, do you believe they'll leave Barcelona in the next few days before the La Liga starts? That way we can register and have more wiggle room there. And also, what are your thoughts on Frankie de Jong's situation? Would you sell him? Would you keep him? What are your thoughts about Barcelona taking legal action against him if he does not, you know, rescind his contract back to his old contract? Are you, you know, this, I'm not saying disappointed, are you, you know, feel bad for Frankie de Jong for what his current situation he's currently in? And of course, finally, your thoughts on Gabi renewing his contract at Barcelona as well. And of course, make sure you guys subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time on the channel. Take care and Forza Barca.